हेलो एंड वेलकम टू द वर्ल्ड एनवायरनमेंट डे वी कॉल द जून मंथ एज वर्ल्ड एनवायरनमेंट मंथ आल्सो एंड हेंस एज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द पार्ट ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी सो वी आर स्टडीइंग रिगार्डिंग द नेचर वी आर स्टडीइंग रिगार्डिंग आवर एनवायरनमेंट ओके सो लेट्स कंटिन्यू द पार्ट ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी एंड कंजर्वेशन ओके नाउ इन द कंटिन्यूड पार्ट ऑफ बायोडायवर्सिटी एंड कंजर्वेशन we have patterns of biodiversity we have a title called as patterns of biodiversity under which we come across various types of these gradients first one is a latitudinal gradient and second comes the species area relationships so first let's study what is the latitudinal gradient now generally what we say as we move towards the latitude of the globe as we move towards from the equatorial region towards the polar regions the species richness will decrease and it is vice versa as we move from the polar regions towards the equator the species richness will increase okay why it is so because the equatorial region mainly we call this region as a tropical rainforest and in this tropical rainforest it harbors a majority of the species because the environmental condition remains the same throughout the world not throughout the world throughout the entire year as a result as the temperature is feasible for the sustenance and survival of the organisms we call this equatorial region as a tropical region and as it harbors lot of species then comes the temperate region then comes the polar region temperate regions has less biodiversity and the polar regions has the least biodiversity very less because the climatic condition is frozen and it is not suitable for sustenance of a majority of the life okay so let's study the characters of the latitudinal gradients okay now in the first point we come across the diversity of plants and animals is not uniform throughout the world but shows a rather uneven distribution okay as we know why it shows uneven distribution so we'll come to know in the next point now in general species diversity look at this part in general the species diversity it decreases so it goes on decreasing as we move away from equator towards the polar regions so how it is okay so let's see it now suppose if we take this as a the globe now in this globe we make the middle part this as the equator so this is the equatorial region from the equatorial region from the equatorial region on the top side we call it as a north pole this as the south pole we call both ends as a polar regions okay now here from the equator this is 23.5 degree north and lower one 23.5 degree south now this region is said to be what the tropical region and above this so over this if we come we can call this we can call this as a the temperate region so this is the equator from the equator 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south so these it this belt we call it as a tropical belt above this we call it temperate above this we call polar regions okay now look at the statement here in general species diversity decreases as we move away from the equator towards the poles that means if we move from the equator towards the polar region the species diversity decreases and vice versa if we move from polar regions towards the equator the species richness will increase because this belt receives more sunlight and the temperature is constant throughout the year as a result the species can survive and sustain in this environmental condition that, that is the uh, reason where this equatorial belt or the tropical region has the highest species richness okay then 
comes the temperate region, the number of the species is less there because the climatic condition becomes cold. Polar regions, it is in the frozen condition. So that's why it harbors very least species. Look at the part here. So tropical forest, it has the highest species diversity in the world throughout the globe. Temperate regions, less number of species. Now polar regions, least number of species. Okay, so very less number of species are there because sunlight which it receives is also less. Temperature is severely cold. It is in minus degree Celsius. It might be minus 20, minus 30, minus 50. Okay, so more than that also. So totally it will be frozen in frozen condition throughout the year. That's why as we move from the equator towards the polar region, the species richness will decrease from the north pole or from the polar regions towards the equator, the species richness will increase. Now look at this. Now, from the equatorial region, if we move towards the polar region, the species richness will decrease. And from the polar regions, if we move towards the equator, the species richness will increase. So that's why we say it is vice versa. Okay. So this is regarding the point. Now let's go to the next point. Latitudinal range of 23.5 degree to 23.5 degree north and south. So this is the north, this is the south as I have shown here 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south it harbors it has lot of species so more species than temperate or polar regions okay this is an comparative account for the species where they are present in temperate and polar in the temperate region and polar region the number of the species are less in this belt, equatorial belt, 23.5 degree north and 23.5 degree south, the total number of species are more. So that is the statement which an ecologist say. Then let's go to the next one. Colombia, which is located near the equator. So Colombia, it is located near the equator, has nearly, it has nearly, 1400 species of birds look at this this is again not the number of the birds it is not the population of the birds it is a species for example if we take a peacock a peacock belongs to one species a pigeon belongs to one more species a parrot belongs to one more species a crow one more species in such a way that if we look at the number of the species of birds Colombia located near equator because equator harbors a lot many species. So Colombia located near equator has a nearly 1400 species of birds while New York okay New York at 41 degree north. So New York at 41 degree north has a 105 species of birds. Then look at the next part Greenland at 71 degree has only 56 species of birds now look at the species richness with respect to the birds here Colombia as it is located near the equatorial region as we know this equatorial belt this has highest number of species so we are taking an example of Colombia so Colombia which is located nearer to the equator not exactly at the equatorial belt, nearer to the equatorial belt, has the highest number of species of birds. We are talking only about the birds. Be particular about it. It has how many? 1,400 species of birds. New York at 41 degree. Look at this. This is 23.5 degree south. This is at the north. New York is a present towards the north region. So uh, in the America. So 41 degree means above this. 41 degree north means uh, it comes under the temperate region only. So 41 degree north has 105 species of birds and Greenland at 71. Look at this above this again 71 degrees above this above the New York is a Greenland at 71 degree north has only 56 species of birds. That means as we move from equatorial region towards the polar region, the species richness will decrease. As we move from polar regions towards the equator, the species richness will increase. This is a classical example quoted by the ecologist. And these are the facts and figures. You have to remember these numbers because it will be asked for an objective part. 
so this statement is most important so colombia has a 1400 species of birds new york has 105 species of birds and greenland has how many species only 56 species of birds this is from the polar region sorry from the equator towards the polar regions okay the next one india so india it comes under the tropical latitudes has more than 1200 species of birds so even india is also rich in species diversity so our country so our country it consists of 1200 species of birds and majority of these birds is identified by salim ali and he is called as an ornithologist also okay so this is regarding the points of the latitudinal gradient with respect to the species richness then the next part a forest in tropical region like ecuador look at this ecuador is a region of a tropics so tropical means again nearer to the equatorial belt we call it as a tropical region now ecuador as it is located near the tropical region of the globe has up to 10 times look at this has up to 10 times as many species of vascular plants compared to the temperate regions like midwest of usa so here we are comparing the total number of plant species in the ecuador as well as in usa so ecuador has up to 10 times the species richness is 10 times more than the midwest of united states of america so that's why this ecuador as it is located nearer to the equatorial belt in the tropical region has a highest plant diversity while compared to the midwest of usa okay so here we are comparing because we are just observing which species are surviving in what climatic condition so that's why that if the climatic condition is suitable majority of the species will survive okay for example india in india we have different climatic conditions also but uh, though we have different climatic conditions uh, the environmental conditions uh, almost remains uh, same uh, and uh, it may vary slightly from region one region to another region okay now suppose if we take one region like rajasthan in Rajasthan, if you look at the summer, summer in the summer, the temperature rises uh, more than 50 degrees Celsius also. But look at the temperature in our state. So you can just compare the temperature of the states also. In our temperature, highest temperature recorded will be around 43 degrees Celsius and lowest might be around 15 degrees Celsius or 12 degrees Celsius, not less. That means uh, there is a not so fluctuation in certain regions and there will be more fluctuations in certain regions if there are no fluctuations in the temperature of a particular region it consists of a maximum number of species if there is a lot of fluctuation in the temperature the species cannot survive and suppose if the temperature are very severe okay let us consider the temperature is too high the temperature is too low so both the extremities do not harbor do not consist do not give a habitat to survive the species so that's why optimum optimum meaning if the temperature is suitable for the organisms they can survive and they can flourish like anything okay then let's go to the next one the biggest forest the amazon rainforest it is the biggest forest in the world okay so as we have discussed in the previous class what is the amazon forest called as lungs of planet earth okay so the amazon rainforest in south america located in the south america has the greatest biodiversity on the earth look at this amazing thing here so amazon rainforest is called as the greatest biodiversity on the earth that's why amazon forest is the biggest forest it is the greatest forest in the entire world okay then why we call it as the greatest biodiversity on the earth because it has look at the species here it has 40,000 species of plants most important these are again facts and figures only it has around 40,000 species of plants 
3000 species of fishes 1300 species of birds 427 species of mammals 427 species of amphibians 378 species of reptiles and more than 1 lakh 25000 of invertebrates look at the species richness wow that's why we say biodiversity is the life of earth and biodiversity because of this rich biodiversity we are surviving okay then uh, if we look at this number this is the highest and richest number in terms of species richness that's why we have the great amazon forest which resides a lot of species so uh, what does it has so these numbers are most important again i am telling you i am stressing on this point these numbers are most important as far as exam point of view is cons considered because the numbers do not change the number may change in that region and we are looking at the facts which are already discovered and written according to the ncert okay and a lot many species new species will be there they can be discovered also we cannot say okay suppose if we say 40000 species of plants is that fixed no because uh, this amazon rainforest as uh, it is very thick forest uh, still lot many species might be present there so that's why so total number of species which are discovered and described uh, we have taken them into consideration so other uh, species might be there but we are believing the numericals of uh, your ncert okay so for uh, what is the amazon rainforest has 40000 species of plants 3000 species of uh, fishes and uh, 1300 species of birds then look at this 427 species of mammals 427 species of amphibians 378 species of reptiles and more than 125000 species of invertebrates okay the next scientists estimate that 2 million insect species are waiting to be discovered look at this number 2 million it's not a small number 2 million insect species is yet to be discovered and described that's why i will be telling if you become a biologist and ecologist then you have a lot of time to discover these species because a class insecta phylum arthropoda is the biggest phylum in the world which consists of many species while compared to the rest of the animal kingdom so that's why 2 million species of insects are yet to be discovered in the amazon rainforest okay so th that what makes biology as a, its beauty so this is the aesthetic nature's beauty because uh, these species are present in the nature we have not created it they have been produced by the process of uh, evolution so what is uh, evolution you will study in the topic called as uh, evolution so this is regarding the characters uh, where we are going to study with respect to the latitudinal gradient with respect to the patterns of a biodiversity